Hey guys, Mr. Pookie here, back with another video. And today in Pokey's classroom, we will be talking about Black Swan's pre-release analysis um, because as of this current moment, um, Black Swan's teaser kit that has already been officially released on MiHoYo's website, including her base character kit, her tracers, uh, as well as her signature light cone, right? So we will be taking a look at what her kit has to offer for us, as well as some additional CN sources that I've um, gathered from a few different Billy Billy uh, videos, right? So without further ado, Let's get into today's content. So today we have the character preview for Black Swan, Nihility Wind Unit. This sentence does hold some kind of significance. So I do want uh, villagers to take note of this. Is that we are capable of inflicting enemy with our Arcana through various means, right? Arcana is a unique form of DOT, which means that we know for a fact that Arcana, it is not considered as wind shear, it's not considered as burn, it's not considered as shot, it is not considered as bleed. It is like the fifth DOT, right? The elusive fifth, it is like the white power ranger of the DOT units, right? So Black Swan can trigger through various additional effects based on the number of Arcana stacks on the enemy target. Basically, what we can tell is that her entire purpose, right, her entire kit, it heavily hinges on the number of Arcana stacks that we have on the target, which differs from our traditional DOT units, right? Like Kafka, like Sampo, like Gwen Iphone. They straight up apply a single DOT and that's that, right? Except for Sampo, which can apply up to five stacks of wind shear, Black Swan is basically like Sampo but on roids, right? You can apply a shit ton of stacks on Arcana and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't see um, a cap on this. Okay, I mean, obviously there's going to be a cap, but theoretically speaking, we should be able to stack a very, very high amount of Arcana stacks with Blackstone. The question is how high? And for that, we have to wait until Blackstone is officially released because I don't think Mihoyo actually showed us how high it is, right? All right, so let's move on to a tracers. After using a skill to hit an enemy that has Wind, Shear, Bleed, Burn, or Shock, each of these debuffs respectively has a chance of inflicting one extra stack of arcana so class as you guys remember we want to stack on arcana as fast as possible and we also know that arcana it is a fifth deal tier the white power ranger so now we know that with this specific trace we know that black swan wants to be paired with a secondary DOT, right? I don't think it's very hard to derive this because black swan by herself she inflicts arcana but the more kinds of DOT we have on a target, the faster we can stack Arcana. So because of this, should we run our, our Black Swan as a hyper carry DOT unit? And the answer to that is you can, but it's probably not going to be optimal because chances are, uh, if you really, really want to stack on Arcana as fast as possible and as much as possible, you do want to pair up with a Bleed, Burn, Shock or Wind Shock or whatever kind of stuff to make this stack go up, right? Going to our second trace, Goblet's Dredges. There's a chance to inflict one stack of Arcana when a target enters a battle. Every time an enemy target receives DOT during a single attack by an ally, Note that it is by an ally. There is a chance for the target to be inflicted with one stack of Arcana. There is a limit to the number of Arcana stacks that can be inflicted on an enemy in a single attack. So once again, this second trace, it is a very clear indication that Black Swan, as a unit, would pair really well with a secondary DOT um, ally, right? So you, you want to stack on so many Arcana to the point where the enemy just like... like, like you you want to give the enemy a stroke, right? with the amount of DOT you have. Think of playing Black Swan like you're playing Simulated Universe with Nihility. You just want to stack on so many f DOTs on the target to the point where you do tons of damage, right? So with these two tracers alone, we can derive Black Swan will most likely want to be paired with a secondary DOT unit, right? Cool, next. Candle Flames Portent. Increase the damage dealt by this unit by amount equivalent to a certain percentage of EHR up to a limit. I think this is pretty straightforward. Okay, is there anyone in class right now that do not understand what this does? No one, right? It basically means the more EHR you stack on, the more damage you're gonna do. It's very, very similar to Xue Yi, right? Xue Yi, the more break damage, uh, sorry, break effect you stack on, the more damage it's gonna do. So this is basically the DOT version of Xue Yi's Tracer. Right? So super, super straightforward. I don't think we need to talk about this that much, right? Leveling of materials, we ain't gonna read all that, but at this point, I do wanna point out that the essential material for Blackstone, you can, in fact, pre-farm them as of this current moment, right? This Ascendant Debris, right? This little flower over here, you do get this material from 
killing the the ascended one, I believe, right? The 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 gear looking the gear looking mob, right? Just okay, go 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 and beat them up, and you can pre farm for um, black swan right now, right? The rest of the stuff not really that important. Right? This, this is also you can get it from from the current uh, weekly boss, right? Cool. First things first, technique. At the beginning of the next battle, there's a chance to inflict a stack of arcana on each enemy. If arcana is successfully inflicted on any enemy, the effect will be repeated on the affected enemies which until it fails to inflict arcana on any of them. The re-trigger chance of inflicting arcana will be lowered with each successful arcana inflicted on the target. I'm going to summarize this in one, one sentence, right? You use your technique, any enemy that enters the battle, they'll get arcana and they'll just infinitely stack on this arcana. It's kind of like gambling, right? You just keep gambling and gambling and gambling and gambling to the point where you eventually stop getting arcana and you'll stop there, right? So, um, it, it's kind of like to jumpstart, right? It's to, it is to jumpstart Black Swan's arcana stacks at the start of battle, right? Class, take your eyes off of the boobas, but do you take a look at the animation over here? Uh, this is in fact not an attack animation, which means you can use this uh, preemptively. You don't need to use this technique before entering into a battle, which means that you can combine this with another DOT's unit technique, such as Kafka, right? So you, if we are going to be playing Memory of Chaos or Pure Fusion, uh, we are probably almost always going to be using this technique, right? Basic attack. Deals wind damage to a single enemy with a chance of inflicting one step of arcana and the current enemy has wind shear, bleed, burn or shock applied to them. Each respectively has a chance of additionally inflicting one extra step. Okay, so basically once again, we can see that as long as Black Swan is paired up with another secondary DOT unit, uh, we can inflict additional arcana stacks on the enemy. Sure, you can run Black Swan without a secondary DOT, which means that it is basically, you just ignore the second light, right? So it's just with a chance of inflicting one step of stack arcana, Boom, done. But if you do pair with a secondary DOT, you basically double the time you can actually stack on Arcana, which is going to be really, really good. And one thing that we can actually take a note is that this basic attack inflicts Arcana, which means Black Swan can function as a sub DPS. She is not skill point intensive, right? You can, in fact, inflict Arcana on the target uh, simply just by using her basic attack. Uh, and this will be very important when we take a look into a skill, which is. Oh, wait. Okay, I guess we talk about talent first. All right, talent. Each enemy target has a certain chance at the start of each turn to be afflicted by a stack of Arcana for every instance of duty sustained. When afflicted by Arcana, any targets will be receiving duty at the start of each turn. Each stack of Arcana increases by damage of multiplier, multiplier, which is to one stack. There is a limit for Arcana stacks. At the beginning of enemy's turn, when Arcana causes damage, Black Swan will trigger additional stacks that can be stacked based on the number of Arcana uh, stacks inflicted on the target. Over three stacks, inflict between duty to adjacent enemy and has a chance of inflicting one stack of Arcana to adjacent target. And at seven stacks and above, the duty inflicted on the target ignores a certain percentage of defense on both the target and the adjacent targets. Okay. So, to break this down to my students, to my villagers, this is essentially breaking down into at the start of the enemy's turn, they can be afflicted by an additional stack of arcana. And this brings us to the point which is the Lightning Lord problem. Because of our talent requiring us to wait until the start of the enemy's turn, right? Each enemy target has a certain chance at the start of each turn to be afflicted by a stack of Arcana for every instance of duty to stay, which means Black Swan's damage is, is what, chat? It's backloaded, right? We already know that DOT in general, their kit, their damage is backloaded, but it is especially so for Black Swan because not only do we need to wait for the normal DOT to inflict additional damage on the enemy's turn, we even have to wait for the enemy's turn to inflict additional stacks of Arcana. So basically, it might be a bit of a concern for players that want to run Black Swan as a main DPS without Kafka. Kafka, at this point, we can come into the next answer to our question, which is how she can greatly elevate this a problem for Black Swan. Kafka can front load a portion of Black Swan's damage, right? We can trigger Arcana, we can trigger the DOT effects, deal a little bit more damage before it actually reaches the enemy turn. But Kafka is a band-aid to a bigger problem. She inherently cannot fix that each enemy target still have to wait for their turn to be afflicted by Arcana. This is a very unfortunate thing because if you take a look at the second line over here, at the beginning of an enemy's turn, when Arcana causes damage, Black Swan will trigger additional effects. But this is only, only at the beginning of an enemy's turn, which means that this three stacks effect, as well as this seven stacks effect, they in fact do not trigger with Kafka, right? I repeat, they in fact do not trigger with Kafka. This might be a little bit of a concern, 
because essentially Kafka cannot fix this, right? There's, there, there's no way for any unit to fix the issue where Black Swan have to wait for the enemy's turn to begin uh, in order to receive the all these benefits, right? Um, this additional Arcana stacks, the, the three, three stack benefit, the seven stack benefit, the defense should ignore. All this, it can never be triggered by anyone until the enemy's turn begins, which is very similar to how you always just have to wait for Lightning Lord to come up. There's no fixing this because Lightning Lord's speed is always fixed at 10 stacks, right? Maximum Lightning Lord can go is once per cycle, right? There's no fixing this. Um, yeah, you, you guys may think you can fix Black Swan, you can't fix this, right? So just take this into consideration as to whether this will impact Black Swan's actual combat experience. We'll have to wait and see, right? Cool, next. Okay, now we can talk about the skill. Essentially, to a single target and adjacent target, you deal damage, you inflict one stack of Arcana, and you reduce defense. That's it, right? So one good thing about this skill, Black Swan is our first ever unit in the entire game to have defense reduction on her skill. So this brings up a whole Pandora's box of, of team building questions, right? Can we run Black Swan as a debuffer for any other team comps? In my opinion, you can, but I don't think that a player should be pulling for Black Swan solely for the purpose of defense reduction. It's just not worth it in my opinion. It's kind of like, okay, you bought like a cake and you only ate the, the little the little fruit. You only ate the cherry. You bought a whole ass cake and you only wanted to eat that one little cherry. That is the, that is the perfect analogy if you guys want to pull for Black Swan just for it to be a debuffer. Because although this, this might look appealing to normal team comps, right? We can apply defense down really, really good on our skill. The thing is, Pella, which is probably one of our best defense down applicator, we, we don't really need to use this many defense down anyways. It's not like we're going to be casting our skill every single turn. It is not like um, just because our defense down is tied to our skill, it means that our defense down multiplier is higher. Although we don't really know what's the multiplier over here, but I'm going to be assuming it's not going to be some insane amount, right? And I'm assuming that this defense reduction, it is not stackable. Otherwise, it'll be completely broken, right? If Black Swan's defense reduction is stackable, then then f me, right? But I, I sincerely doubt this. I sincerely doubt this, right? So because of this, it is essentially, do you want defense reduction on your ultimate or do you want defense reduction on your skill? So the appeal for having a defense reduction on your skill is that you can in fact use it on the very first turn in Memory of Chaos, right? But Pella can also do this with their ultimate. If you have a run main signature icon, you can do it with a technique into a basic attack. If you don't have run main signature icon, uh, you can do it with a technique into a skill, right? Either way, you are able to apply your defense down on the target with or without using the skill. Which means this, this niche, this niche that Black Swan's skill provides, which means you can mark defense on the very first turn, is really not all that, right? It's not that important because Pella can do the exact same thing and it doesn't make sense for anyone to pull Black Swan just because you want to use her skill as a defense reduction, right? So I hope that clears up the question to the class. Next. Okay, first of all, before we get into what her ultimate does, I just want to say this is the most beautiful looking ultimate I've seen in Hongai Stario. Genuinely, this, this looks really, really good. Okay, but anyways, Black Swan's ultimate applies Epiphany on all enemies for a certain number of turns. Enemies affected by Epiphany takes more damage in their turn and the Arcana effect is regarded as Windshield Bleed Burn Shock effects. In addition, when the Arcana effect is triggered at the beginning of the next turn, Arcana stacks are not reset. The stack non-reset effect can only be triggered one time in Epiphany's duration, and its charges are replenished when Epiphany is applied again. Deals win damage to all targets. This ultimate is integral to Black Swan's entire kit. Because if I can refer a uh, class to all the way back at the start, each enemy at the start of each turn is afflicted by a stack of Arcana for every instance of DOT sustained. So with Epiphany, under the effect of Epiphany, Arcana is now considered as four different DOTs, which means we can now get this even with Black Swan by herself. And then if you guys remember, even her basic attack, it is also considered, right? Target currently has Windshield, Bleed, Burn Shot applied to them. Each respectively has a chance of inflicting one extra stack, which means that under the effect of Epiphany, this is an another additional Arcana applications because of the ultimate uh, making Arcana classify as four different duties. And furthermore, all the way back to the talent, right? Inflict Arcana, blah, blah, blah. Every single time you receive duty during a single attack, there's a chance to be inflicted by one stack of Arcana, limit to the number of Arcana stacks that can be applied, which means that because we have so many different duties under the Epiphany effect, this golden dredge, a uh, goblet dredges, as well as Viscera's dis dis Disquet, all these, they all benefit from this Epiphany effect. So because of this class, right? Because of this, 
we can now de in fact determine that Black Swan's ultimate is extremely, extremely important. Taking that into consideration, how do we adjust this when it comes to building our Black Swan, right? There's two schools of thoughts currently. One school of thought, we run Black Swan with energy regeneration rope and tutorial light cone. Because tutorial light cone gives us additional eight energy when we hit a target with defense down, which works perfectly with Black Swan skill, right? So with these two combined, can we achieve a two turn ultimate? Because I am assuming that three turn ultimate should be our, our baseline. Because if we can achieve a two turn ultimate, this is going to be really, really strong. Okay, to all those players that didn't join Hongar Stario <laughs> that before version 1.2, you, you know, I, I, it, it, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. I'm, I'm not saying that you guys absolutely need tutorial like Cone with ERO to run Black Swan with, but I am just offering this to the class school of thought, full for thought, right? So that's one way to go about it. Uh, and the second school of thought is we don't really care about the epiphany that much because we are pairing uh, Black Swan with a secondary DOT. So we just run her as like a, any other uh, secondary DPS. Uh, we don't really care that much about ultimate our time and we leave the main DPS such as like Kafka to deal the main damage. And uh, between these two, I'm not really a fan of the second way to play because even though we do have Kafka uh, being the second apply of DOT so maybe this is not that important right uh, it's, it still benefits Black Swan to get her ultimate up as soon as possible because remember this this effect over here it can stack on a lot a lot of times and these are like exponentially increasing so for every single stat you deal even more damage so that's number one and also for this specific talent or this trace over here there might be a limit yes theoretically speaking i think that this limit right here is gonna be pretty high so i do believe that black swan having a high ultimate uptime it shouldn't really impact the player base when it comes to reaching the arcana's maximum stack and because of this i do think that having a high ultimate uptime on Black Swan would be pretty beneficial. And with this regard, if you guys haven't gotten yourself an energy regeneration rope on your glamour set, you might want to start saving a resin, right? I'm not saying that this is the best build, but in my opinion, I think this is going to be pretty damn well. Oh, I completely forgot about this, by the way. Epiphany also has takes more damage in their turn. So this is in completely disregarding all of the Arcana effects, right? This is regarding, disregarding all this. We also add an additional debuff, which lets the enemy take more damage in your turn. This is essentially the vulnerability debuff, right? Same as the Silver Wolf Signature Light Cone, same as Wells Ultimate, the vulnerability debuff. And all these debuffs, they're extremely, extremely important to the DOT team comp because DOT team comp's damage, it it heavily ties to the amount of debuffs you can stack on a target because when it comes to our buff, we really can only benefit that much from attack and damage, right? Because we completely do not benefit from crit whatsoever. So because of this, debuffs really, really important for DOT. All right, so with all this factor into consideration, that's going to be my thought on Black Swan's ultimate. There is this beauty of Black Swan. Every time an enemy target receives DOT during a single attack by an ally, there's a chance to inflict one step of Arcana, which means that we don't need Black Swan to be faster than Kafka. Because right now, every single one of our DOT units, we want our secondary DOT to be faster than Kafka. For Black Swan, you don't need to. You can actually trigger Arcana because of this, right? As a result, I do believe that Black Swan's build, you don't really need that much speed on Black Swan. You do need more on the effect hit rate because of this trace over here. And I do believe that you need more attack percentage, right? So now we'll move on to a light cone. What is this? Oh my God. Yo, stop guys. Stop. Right in class right now. Will you show your teacher tits in class? Are you kidding? My God. Guys, let's talk about a black light cone. <clears throat> Reforged Remembrance. Increase wearer's effect hit rate by 40%. When the wearer deals damage to the enemy inflicted with windshield, okay, okay, I'm just gonna sum it down to any enemy with any DOT, right? They will individually gain one stack of profit. This effect can be stacked up to four times, and in a single battle, sorry, each type of DOT can only generate one stack of profit, which means um, we do need to diversify the DOTs inflicted on enemy target in order to trigger this, this stack of profit. Uh, and then every single step of profit increase awareness attack by 5% and the DOT to deal with ignore 7.2% of the target's defense, which means that at the maximum stacks, we will ignore 28.8% of the target's defense. Now, there's the icon over here. We don't have to wait for a black swan stun. 
We don't have to wait for the enemy's turn. Kafka can, in fact, trigger the effects. Assuming that the wording is, 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 is named correctly, right? So, I do believe that this Black Swan signature icon is going to be really, really, really good on Black Swan uh, because of this single line right here, which ignores 28. I'm just going to call it 28.8, right? 28.8% of the target's defense. So, you combine this with Black Swan's um, defense break as well as our four-piece prisoner, which is another 18% defense reduction. And then combined with another debuffer, right? Let's just say we, we run Pella. Uh, what's Pella's defense now? I think it's 42% uh, at level 12 ultimate and another 16% with resolution. We can essentially hit close to, if not 100% defense now, combining all these things together. So our DOT will deal tons of damage, right? Or if you are an individual, if you guys put better and you manage to get yourself a E1 run me, Ooh, it's gonna be hard, right? It's gonna be hard. The question is, what are the alternatives to Black Swan's Light Cone? What if we don't want to pull for Black Swan's Light Cone? What other Light Cone uh, can we potentially run with Black Swan? Uh, for one, if assuming that we are running a Kafka, right? Assuming that we are running a Kafka, should we run Kafka Signature Light Cone on Black Swan or should we run Kafka Signature Light Cone on Kafka? And class, this is a very simple answer, all right? This is very, very simple. And I hope that you guys know this. So can I get an answer from the class, right? Should we, who should we run Kafka Signature like on? I'll be so disappointed if you guys don't know. Okay, thank you, All right? Oh my God, my class actually knows. Yeah, exactly, you run that on Kafka, why? Because like I mentioned just now, Black Swan does not need to be fast. You don't need Black Swan to be super fast. In fact, Kafka being fast is absolutely crucial because she is, at the end of the day, our DOT detonator, our DOT trigger. So because of this, our unit really, really wants to be fast, right? Our Kafka really, really wants to be fast. Black Swan being slow, we don't give a shit, right? But Kafka being slow, that's a no-no, right? So be between these two situations, I do want to see you guys equipping Kafka with Kafka Signature Light Cone. If you guys manage to pull for two Kafka Signature Light Cones, I don't know what you guys were doing that day. Maybe you did a single temple and you got two Kafka Signature Light Cones. Can Black Swan run Kafka Signature Light Cone? Yes, she can. But unfortunately, Kafka's DOT, the Kafka's Light Cone's DOT erode it doesn't stack. So because unfortunately, the, the fact that this DOT does not stack when you use it on both Kafka and Black Swan, um, the returns on this light cone is greatly diminished. It is is greatly, greatly diminished because now you basically give Black Swan a 14.4% speed buff as well as the damage percentage buff, right? The erode is completely wasted because Kafka is already applying erode the, the erode can't apply twice, right? So unfortunately, if you guys manage to get two Kafka signature light cone, me personally, I'll just go ahead and fuse them and just give Kafka an S2 instead of an S1, right? So that's it. Um, now, if you do not have these two light cones, right? What about our free-to-play options to our, for, for free-to-play villagers, right? For our free-to-play students, right? We have Herta Shop, signature light cone. Um, solidary confinement or something like that, right? We have Gunnar and Sleep Well. Gunnar and Sleep Well is truly the GOAT of nitty light cones, right? 72% damage buff, absolutely insane. And then we have Sampo's signature light cone. Uh, Sampo's light cone, um, Eyes of the Prey which gives us effect hit rate as well as um, damage percentage, right? Um, these three will be our main considerations on Black Swan. Now, between these three light cones class, I do believe that Herta's signature light cone has a potential because it gives us energy. Increase the wearer's break effect by blah, blah, blah. It unleash ultimate increased DOT dealt by blah, blah, blah. And defeating the target suffering from the wearer's DOT regenerates blah, 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 right? So honestly, this light cone is actually not that bad. The only bad thing is just break effect is like, uh, it doesn't really benefit us. We, we don't really care about break effect with, with Black Swan. The DOT damage inflicted, that's going to be really good, right? Unfortunately, that is going to be tied to our ultimate. Something to consider, right? And defeating the enemy suffering from the worst DOT can let us regenerate six energy. An interesting thing to note here is that it is defeating the target suffering from the DOT, which means that Black Swan does not need to be the one landing the final blow, right? Black Swan does not need to be the executioner. Kafka can be the one killing the target. As long as the target dies from Black Swan's DOT, she can still get an energy buff. Yeah, so because of this, solid solitary healing is going to be a... It's gonna be a pretty decent choice if I can say so myself, right? But I do believe though, I do believe that between Eyes of Prey as well as Good Night and Sleep Well, I do believe that Eyes of Prey is gonna be really, really, really good in Black Swan because effect hit rate, it gains additional benefits based off of 
this trace over here, right? Increased damage dealt by this unit equivalent to the certain percentage of EHR up to a limit. So assuming that we don't hit the limit and we were to equip Sampo Signature Light Cone, it means that we can allocate more substats into either attack percentage or speed, right? It is always about opportunity cost in the game, right? Yeah, sure. You can give Black Swan a shit ton of EHR and then you can run good and sleep well, or you can give Black Swan more attack percentage and speed and then you run um, Eyes of the Plate, right? So opportunity cost wise, I do believe that Eyes of Prey gains a little bit more of a benefit than Good Night and Sleep Well for Black Swan, right? So, yeah, that's gonna be that. Before tutorial mission starts, alright, if you guys have not played Hongai Star Rail before patch version 1.2, uh, I mean, we, we, we're gonna get a rerun soon. We, we, we'll get a rerun, alright? Don't, don't, don't worry, guys. We, we, we'll get a rerun. It's just that um, this, this like, genuinely, it looks really, really good. It gives us a value, right? 40% good shit, which also translates to damage percentage, as well as 8 energy whenever we hit an enemy. We hit it with our basic attack, we hit it with our skill, we hit it with our ultimate, it all generates 8 energy, which is a ridiculous amount of energy, genuinely, right? So, I, I think this is gonna be... Okay, I, I don't really wanna say that much because, you know, some people don't have it, right? Fermata. Um, genuinely, nah. Between Fermata, right, you, you get break effect as well as uh, increased damage dealt by shock or, and, or, or wind shear, but... You might as well just go for Sampo Signature Light Cone, uh, which gives you EHR and damage percentage, right? Because I, I got to tell you guys, Brave is really just not that important on Black Swan, right? So because of this, uh, from Mata, I don't think it's going to be a viable choice. And that will wrap it up for Black Swan's Light Cone choices. Now, with all that being said and done, we have come to our final segment of today's class. All right. 90 seconds helps you um, instantly create Black Swan's team comp, right? In 90 seconds, right? So this is a pretty quick video. She's so f hot. Okay, but anyways, yeah, let's continue. Hanlo pay duty. First, Ka Hei Ruan Huo is the Black Swan's most powerful team. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Kaf Ka, Black Swan, Ran Mei, Huan Huan, best in slot team comp. And I don't really think we need that much of an explanation, right? Should be should, should be pretty straightforward here. Ran Mei, especially for Ka Ma Zhuang Wu's players, don't be like some three dots team. Okay, so this one is pretty interesting. If you guys do have, if you guys do have Ran Mei with Kaf Ka Signature Light Cone, uh, you you don't really need to consider about triple DOT comps. You don't really need to consider about triple duty because Ramey's buffs she amplifies both Black Swan and Kafka, right? Okay, we're gonna let it talk talk a little bit more because they will explain it pretty pretty easy, right? Other than the with the exception of Gui Nai Fen, Sampo and Luca they are traps, they are traps. From the official announcement, look, the Red Yang Lin Kama can make the Red Yang Lin Kama 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 make the Red Yang Lin with an E0, S0 Kafka, at the start, we can consistently gain 7 stacks of Arcana. 9 stacks if we have Kafka's Signature Light Cone. Because Signature Light Cone, we stack on another stack of DOT, right? So we start with 1 stack, Kafka trigger, 2 stack, Black Swan, Auto Attack, Slash Skill, 2 stacks, and then when enemy turn begins, enemy turn stack on another 2 stacks for a total of 7 stacks. So at this point, we do get the full benefit of the 7 stacks, right? We get a defense ignore, right? Super, super important, and we can see here, we can already attain these 7 stacks with E0, S0, Kafka alone. So because of this, that's why CM believes that there is no reason to run um, 3 DOTs, right? So that's it. 以上, 上三个刀刀手, 只能是给黑天鹅单人多加一点点倍率 Adding a third DOT, we slightly increase Black Swan's um, damage multiplier by slightly not as significant compared to Mifu not as significant as compared to Rame's amplification 没差大用, 并且这样配对战机点, 充能, 以及一伤覆盖率, If we were to use Black Swan Kafka and Gui Naifen, we will get an issue with skill point distribution, energy regeneration, and an overall um buff amplification, right? Yi Sang Pei Lu, right? So the, the thing is with, with Black Swan, or you just running a three DOT unit, if you run Gui Naifen with Black Swan and Kafka, Gui Naifen doesn't exactly buff Black Swan and Kafka that much. Then the only reason why they mention Gui Naifen here is because Gui Naifen got the Unremovable Fire Kiss, which is a vulnerability debuff, right? That's why Queen Iphone can still be pretty good here. But compared to Run Mei, which has damage percentage buff, has break effect, break efficiency, rest penetration, and if you have Run Mei's E1, defense reduction as well, right? So because of this, generally speaking, the damage amplification for a triple duty is not going to be as high as Run Mei. 
Yep. 不如一个拳击拐来的好用，卡妈刀的手加拳击拐加生酮位这样的双刀的对才是用起来最舒服。上 ，So running Kafka with Black Swan with a dual DPS support with a sustain is gonna be the most comfortable setup, right? 还最高的配对，没有软眉的话，辅助也可以换上。Yeah, this is basically the poor man version. Okay, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is basically the the uh for those of you guys who do not have runway, you can run Pella as a substitute because Pella does have an AOE defense now, so this is gonna be really really good. 佩拉刀的套和奥基的无视防御加黑天鹅的战绩减防加佩拉，基本上可以把怪物防御扒光。Yep. So basically, with the four piece prisoner, with the four piece prisoner, we do get an eighteen percent defense reduction, and you combine this with calf. Uh, uh, we combine this with Pella's defense reduction as well as Black Swan's defense reduction. We can pretty much almost hit one hundred percent defense reduction, and not to mention resolution like one. So. Really, really good. 只要不溢出，收益都是越叠越高的。所以佩拉在刀头队作用会很大。如果你有抽黑天鹅专五，那此时决心小柜子会略微优于。Now, if you decide to pull for Black Swan's signature light cone, with Black Swan's signature light cone, Gui Nai Fen here is gonna be really good. And the reason why it's only Gui Nai Fen and not Sampo or Luca is because Gui Nai Fen has burn. Shock, wind shear, burn. Right. So now we can a a lot more consistently trigger the effect of prophecy, the prophet force decks, even before Black Swan's ultimate. Right. So now we can actually run the good event. We can see a pretty good knowledge here. Pella, 稳定一伤加减防加火道特。Yeah, this is the reason why they recommend the um good event over let's just for example say Luca, right? Because although Luca does have vulnerability. The vulnerability debuff is only tied to Luca's ultimate, whereas for Queen Iphen, you do get this vulnerability debuff, the fire kiss, uh, with her basic kit. You do have to wait for Queen Iphen's ultimate. So really, really good. If you need high speed scenes, you can use Asta. You can also run Asta. Asta is burned, guys. Ah,、uh, Asta is burned, right? So. She does have a burn basic test, so if you guys want to run Asta, it's completely fine. 群体加攻加速加普攻可以上火道特。总体来 ，crazy, crazy, right? 来说比较适合道特队，生存位霍火最佳，百分之。Okay, at this point, I don't really think we need to discuss much here. Huan Huan, absolute goat of a sustain. I feel like every single team comp in in the in the Billy Billy, every single team comp they are recommending Huan Huan because Huan Huan just that great, right? Forty percent attack, twenty percent ER, not just duty. Every single comp in every single Hongkai Stario. This twenty percent team wide energy generation is absolutely insane, right? So, Hui Hui, no diffs. Everyone else, right? No diffs. This twenty percent energy and forty percent attack is very important for the team. Now, this is pretty important, right? Since we only have one Hui Hui, we only have one Hui Hui. Since we only have one Hui Hui, we only have one Hui Hui. Since we only have one Hui Hui, we only have one Hui Hui. Since we only have one Hui Hui, we only have one Hui Hui. Since we only have one Hui Hui, we only have one Hui Hui. Since we only have one Hui Hui, we only have one Hui Hui. Since we only have one Hui Hui, we only have one Hui Hui. Since we only have one Hui Hui, we only have one Hui Hui. Since we only have one Hui Hui, we only have one Hui Hui. Since we only have one Hui Hui, we only have one Hui Hui. Since we only have one Hui Hui, we only have one Hui Hui. Since we only have one Hui Hui, we only have one Hui Hui. Since we only have one Hui Hui, we only have one Hui Hui. Since we She benefits the DOT comp more because the attack percentage is really, really good for DOT, right? And the energy regeneration is also really, really good, especially for dual DPS, right? Kafka's ultimate, Blessons ultimate, super, super important, right? So generally speaking, in terms of opportunity cost, if you can only run one Huang Huang, running it with a DOT gives you a little bit more、um, value. Not to mention, for any other normal comps, you can run Fu Xuan, right? You can run Luo Chao. You can run anything else. Not that, not not that bad, right? 要关键，没有的话也没办法，只能上其他生存位凑合一下。If you do not have Huang Huang. Womp womp! You gotta run some other sustain, right? No karma. Then I would say. Anyways, uh, if you do not have Kafka, this this CN content creator recommends you to not pull for Black Swan, right? If you do not have Kafka, they recommend you to not pull for Black Swan. 建议你别抽黑天鹅，卡妈都不抽，卡妈都不抽。If you don't pull for Mummy Kafka, 黑天鹅是抽了。Then what's the point of pulling for Black Swan? 来当电子手办的吗 ？Like is she dead? Is there to be like? Uh, it's a little bit difficult to translate. It's like a, a, a electronic like hand manual or something like that.、Uh, it's a little bit difficult to translate. But like basically, there's no point pulling for for Black Swan if there's no Kafka in their opinion. 不过考虑到一些人可能会单抽出金，没错，说的就是屏幕前的你。要是没有卡妈，六命桑博或者六命卢卡可以。This is for if you guys are some lucky mother that managed to get Black Swan in a single tempo, like accidentally got Black Swan, and you didn't manage to get Kafka, like you accidentally got Black Swan in a single tempo. Uh, then using Sampo or Luca. Can be pretty good over here, right? 勉强用用 is like, it's like the warm warm, right? Warm warm, we can use it, right? Just barely use it, right? But it's far 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 worse than Kafka. 勉强用用，桑博四命和卢卡六命都能触发好几次。Sambo's E4 and Luca's E6 can trigger multiple DOT effects, right? Sambo's E4, we get to trigger wind shear. Luca's E6, we get to trigger bleed. And 
technically for Black Swan, under the effect of Epiphany, which is the ultimate, we can trigger uh, all sorts of DOT, right? Uh, because our current considers as every single DOT. So, these two trigger abilities at E4 and E6 is going to be pretty good. Dota, can help Hei Tian Er DLG, is a Kama Da Xia Xia Wei. Xia 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 Wei Tita is like Kafka's worst, 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 worst substitute, right? Womp Womp. Tita, the best is to use Sambo, because they are feng shuxing, and it's easy to use. They recommend running Sambo instead of Luka, uh, because in terms of on element situations, you you rather just break the enemy's toughness bar a little bit faster, right? So, um, assuming that enemy is weak to wind, um, you you can run Luka, but it is a little bit difficult to find enemies that are weak to both wind and physical. So, generally speaking, assume the enemy is weak to wind, you running hard with some boy is gonna be pretty good. 贵奶分则不太推荐，毕竟没卡吗？叠吞火太慢了，而且也很难帮黑天鹅叠奥技。下课。Alright, that's the end. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Alright, next. This is this is with regards to. Do you pull for Kafka, Kafka signature like Cohen, Black Swan, Black Swan signature like Cohen? Let's take a look at this. I think this can be pretty great. One minute as well, right? So not that long. 早上招黑天鹅的朋友们注意了，如果你目前还没有卡夫卡，趁着现在复刻卡池还在，一定要优先拿下卡吗？有卡吗 ？Friends, what intend to pull for Black Swan? Please pay attention. Currently, it is Kafka's banner, and if you haven't pulled for Kafka, I strongly recommend you to pull for Kafka. Is this guy like rapping? Okay, I'm sorry, guys. Chinese players, they we just tend to talk very, very fast, right? It is what it is, right? It is what it is. We just talk very, very fast, right? You just gotta bear with it. And then at this point, they're recommending even if you do have a Kafka, they recommend players to pull for Kafka's signature light cone before pulling for Black Swan. That is this opinion. 妈的，也要补个专五。目前他俩的优先级是卡夫卡大于专五，只需等待大于黑天鹅，大于黑天鹅专五。Kafka over Kafka signature light cone over Black Swan over Black Swan signature light cone. 首先，卡夫卡作为 Dota 体系的核心，它的优先级一定是高于所有 Dota 手的。Yup, it's basically okay. Okay, I said it like a billion times. Kafka is the foundation. She is the foundation of DOT units, right? Without Kafka, it's like building a house without without your foundation. It's 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 just not comfortable. You you can play them, right? Yes, you can play them, but it's just ooh, it's not good. It's not good. 尤其是黑天鹅这种需要叠层输出的角色，本身多的出伤就很慢了，他还要更慢。要是没有卡妈打起来，真的有点太磨叽。Oh, this is an excellent point. Uh, which I mentioned just now previously as well. Black Swan inherent problem is that she is even more backloaded than your normal DOT because we have to wait for the enemy's turn to stack on all of our Arcana's effects, right? So we really, really need Kafka to try and front load this damage, uh, created by Black Swan. And without Kafka's DOT trigger. Black Swan's um damage output is just very very slow, right? Tai man right? It's just really really slow. When it comes to Arcana's damage, when it comes to stacking Arcana, Kafka is gonna be the one for you, right? When it comes to our current memory of chaos clearing conditions, Arcana is gonna be our greatest sin or our greatest downfall, our greatest weakness, right? Because it is slow, right? We are limited by these 10 cycles. Um Having our damage to become too slow is a pretty big concern. So, please be careful. No Kama, no Hei Tian. No Kama, no Hei Tian. Right? No Kafka, no Black Swan. Right? So, I feel like generally across both videos, uh, CN do believe that Kafka is like really, 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 really important for for Black Swan. Right? So, that's gonna be that. Hei Tian. So, why is Kama Zhang Wu's usage rate so high? Before, they said Kama doesn't need to charge up. Jinwu's Wan Yu Shui Yan can charge up. Ah, okay. This is an excellent, 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 excellent point, right? There has been a saying where Kafka and Goodnight and Sleepwell's damage comparison is not that significant, right? Like between Kafka's Sinister Light Cone and Goodnight and Sleepwell, the damage differential is not that big. It's like less than like five percent. Like it's really not that impactful. But the thing is, Kafka's Sinister Light Cone's effect has both an additional DOT as well as a fourteen point four percent speed buff, which both things it cannot be replaced by our Goodnight and Sleepwell. And now with the inclusion of Black Swan, these things have a much more greater emphasis than damage percentage. I don't give a shit about damage percentage. Uh, not rather, I don't give a shit. But I place more emphasis on the additional DOT as well as the forty point four percent speed buff, right? So. Because of our four piece prisoner and our two piece glamour. Four piece prisoner gives us an up to eighteen percent defense reduction based on the number of DOT stacks we have our team, right? And with erode, erode is in fact considered as a separate DOT. It is a different DOT from shock, and therefore it helps us trigger our um three DOT effects on our four piece prisoner much more efficiently. Two piece glamour, right? It helps us trigger our one sixty speed. The differential of a one hundred forty six Kafka. If you're trying to get the one sixty speed. You need seven speed subs to hit 160. 
or you pull for a signature icon. So it's going to be a lot easier for the player uh, when it comes to both the four piece prisoner and the two piece glamour. Yep, so these two things, right? Shock and erode completely two different duties. Yep. Yep, yep. This, this, this uh, okay, this one is this one is um this is a little bit iffy. This might piss a lot of people off actually. In this CN creator's perspective, the reason why Kafka's signature like has a bigger emphasis than E0 Black Swan is because that compared to a E6 sample, which is our next win DOT. The improvement in damage for Black Swan, for a Black Swan without a signature light cone, is not that big compared to our E6 sample, right? Keep in mind, E6 sample. So, their, their, their justification is this, right? Your priority should be making your Kafka as strong as possible because if you are going to be playing DOT comps in the future, Kafka is, I can say with like almost 100% certainty, Kafka is going to be there. Your Kafka is pretty much always going to be in every single DOT comp. So because of this, having your Kafka on top of the S1 is going to be crucial, not just for Black Swan, but for all DOT team comps, right? Because our because of all the benefit on Signature Light has to offer, as well as the benefit that Kafka has to offer, right? So Kafka, irreplaceable. So between the Signature Light Cone 1 and Black Swan E0 is that you can in fact substitute Black Swan with an E6 sample or in fact pretty much any other DOT, right? To achieve a pretty pretty all right status when it comes to creating content so that's why um it really depends on how much foresight you have in Hongkai Star right because an important thing to note is okay I think they're gonna talk about it a little bit later right an important thing to note is Black Swan will not be our only five star DOT that is the most important reason why uh, CM believes that if you don't want to put a Black Swan you're really not that big of a deal because in the future they are gonna be getting a five star fire duty they, we are going to be getting a five star physical duty heck we might even get another five star lightning duty it is just simply a matter of time right so genuinely no blessed one not that big of a deal no kafka that's a that's a big ass f problem right so that's gonna be that yeah okay yeah exactly right in the future kafka can pair up with other duty units yep. Yep. Once again, it might be a hot take. Not my hot take, right? It is CN's hot take, right? Black Swan without Kafka is worse than a Firestar DPS unit. It's like she's so bad to the point where like, okay, not so bad, but it's just that she's generally worse than Firestar DPS units, sorry. Right, so if you're going to be putting for a five-star unit, a five-star DPS, if you don't have Kafka, you might as well save your jades and pull for a separate five star, right? That, that is basically the, the, the point. All right, that's basically it. So with that, we have come to the end of our very first episode of Pokey's Classroom, where we are going through the pre-unit analysis, this time featuring Black Swan. If you guys got any further discussions, feel free to hop on to my Discord at discord.gg slash Pokey's Village, where we have a very active community talking about Hongai Stario on a daily basis. If you guys want to check out my stream, that's my Twitch.tv slash Pokey. I'm also streaming on YouTube at the same time. Schedule will be added on Discord. Anyways, that's all I have for today. All the best for our gacha poofs. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. I, I, I genuinely cannot believe this shit. I genuinely cannot believe this shit. I genuinely... I genuinely cannot believe this shit, guys. I ge... Did I say I genuinely... I, I, did I say how I genuinely cannot believe this shit? I genuinely cannot believe this shit, guys.